Now, I'm sure some people must remember mobile phones from the 80s. I mean, you needed your own suitcase to carry them around, and they were pretty ludicrous things, really. But, of course, the technology developed, and now we're ending up with things like this, which are essentially small computers stroke television screens in your pocket. They're truly astounding things. The motor car. The motor car was absolutely rubbish when it first began. At Bertha Benz, the wife of Otto Benz, drove 180 kilometres in 1888, and it took us three days. And now look at the state of the technology when we think about what a car is like. That 180 kilometres? A couple of hours, probably. When you think about computers, the first computers were just huge machines out of brass and steel. And the electronic versions of them weren't, in fact, that much better. But now look at them, and now look at how integrated they are into our everyday lives. And technology frequently has this kind of roadmap. It's early days, it doesn't seem particularly useful, but when it is useful, it gets an awful lot of development, becomes integrated into our lives, and becomes slick. And the same thing is happening to 3D printers. 3D printers, when they first began, were really like cars and computers. The realm of the engineer, the electronics expert, the tinkerer, who loved playing with the machine. And of course, they have that history still. Something like 50% of time spent on early 3D printers was just getting the things to run and print a centimeter cube. Of course, there have been huge advances, particularly in the last 10 years. And there are a number of ways that people are looking at going. Faster and bigger is one of them. But another way that will ensure their integration is ease of use. Now, as they're developing, they're changing from being a bit of an oddity in the same way the phone, the car, the computer did. They're changing from becoming a bit of an oddity to being a real tool, a part of that production process for any tinker or engineer. And they're finding their way into schools and universities all over the place for exactly that reason. So one of the companies perhaps leading the charge on that ease of use philosophy is um, this one. It's Bamboo Lab. Now they have a whole range of products and this is their X1 Carbon that they sent me and they said we don't mind if you don't do anything with it, we think you will, so here you go. And that was really nice of them. But all of their products are aimed at being easy to use, or so they say. So you get an out-of-the-box printing experience and divorce 3D printing from that kind of engineered technical approach that seems to dominate it in other models in earlier years. This one is meant to be super, super easy to use, fast, and produces good prints. Now, I've never used it before, so we're going to use it and find out if that's right or not. There are a ton of unboxing videos, so I didn't bother. What we're going to do is look at that ease of use. Now, in order to create that, what they've done is use that concept of the walled garden. It's a concept that grew up around Macintosh. The idea that everything that comes into the garden is protected, so is the ease of use. And so, one of the things about bamboo is you can only use bamboo kit. Now, of course, it is a technical subject, so of course there are people who have done hacks and workarounds, and you can use other bits and pieces. Bamboo prefer to use their gear to guarantee that ease of use within the walled garden. Now, that's not going to win some adherence, because like everything, we all have our opinions about things. Some people hate that walled garden concept, some people love it. I'm not passing an opinion, I'm just saying that that is the driving force behind the bamboo, and it's supposed to be super easy to use. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it on, give it a go, have a look at it, and see if it is as easy to use as bamboo claim. Okay, so I put the Bamboo Handy app on my phone, and this is an Android phone, and then I downloaded Bamboo Studio, logged in, registered everything, turned the printer on, let it run through its calibration, and it all went swimmingly. I mean, it linked up really, really easily, like it's a poster. And when you're in the app, what you get, or in fact in Studio, what you get is a lot of selected models that you can just go right ahead and print off, and it will print smoothly and easily. And, and that's the whole point of it, I think, to make it seamless. However, 
Once you step outside of those boundaries, you are in fact stepping onto a learning curve because I also decided that I would put it onto my local area network instead of going through the Wi-Fi and instead of going through the internet. And that took a couple of hours of reading to get that to actually work. It worked just fine, but there was a learning curve involved. And if you go from printing a pre-prepared model to preparing your own models, then you're going to be locked into Bamboo Studio. It's all part of that walled garden. You can't use anything else. They actually went to the trouble of writing the app and writing the studio all themselves, and it's really quite good. It sits somewhere between Prussia and Cura in terms of its uh, functionality, but it is a learning curve. And if you want to prefer other slicers, you, you're basically going to have to relearn the slicers. So when you're in Bamboo Studio, this is what it looks like. And we're on the prepare screen where we get everything ready and you import the file by hitting file and import as. And that's where you import your STL file or step file or whatever it is. To load one of the pre-prepared models is actually pretty straightforward. You just go to home and we can see we've got Maker World and the models here. This is the uh, Dune Ornithopter, which I think is quite cool. Let's do that. And we click download and open. And what it will do is download well, and there open. we go. That's now ready to print. Now we're going to hit print plate. And click send. And we can see that's going to take about three hours, uh, three and a half hours to print and use about 50 grams. In order to see the integral camera, you need to click that button down there and make sure you have an SD card in the actual printer so that it can record the time lapses on. Okay, and that's it finished. Now, it's a fairly intricate little model, and most of the time models aren't my thing. I'm more into, you know, constructional stuff. But it's got lots of little intricate detail on it, and it's picked those up quite nicely. And it was pretty fast, and I did remember to use glue on the bed plate. Now, it is being marketed as being super easy to use, and certainly if you stay within the garden, it absolutely is. There's a, a huge broad scope on this, because it comes with a hardened steel nozzle that uh, has a huge range of temperatures, I think it goes up to 300 degrees centigrade, and so there's a much wider range of filaments that could be used here, particularly things like carbon fibre filled or metal filled filaments, and they're one of the really exciting things I want to explore with this, because this is also being promoted as an engineering tool, and that's the whole point of the video. The point of the video is that 3D printers are emerging from the shadows in the same way that mobile phones, cars and computers did, to move from something that was only for uh, tech heads, geeks and engineers, into something that is going to be for everybody, radically shaping our future. And it's one of those things, if you don't get to grips to, you're going to be forever wondering how to set your VCR. Anyway, I'll put this together and, um, you know, stick it on the shelf. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe because this is another exciting thing that we're going to be doing different stuff with.